Take my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of the speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. Fans of this channel have probably heard me talk quite a bit about Count Albert de Dion. He was pivotal in the creation of European car culture, having both made cars and established the first organization to regulate auto racing. But was there someone in England that moved that nation into the driver's seat? And if so, who? Well, the answer to the first question is, of course, yes, but who was it? Uh, some would argue that it was Harry Lawson. Uh, others may claim it was Frederick Lanchester. Yet there was a man in England whose influence is felt to this day, yet he is not well known outside of England, or even in it for that matter. This man was one of, if not the, most important figures in creating British car culture. That man is Frederick Sims. Unlike most Britons, Frederick Richard Sims was born in Germany, specifically Hamburg in 1863. His British family had established a trading company there some 40 years prior, buying, transporting, and selling seafood. After completing his primary education, young Frederick took on an engineering apprenticeship at 16 years of age, gaining his journeyman's license four years later. He went back to his ancestral home of Birmingham to begin his engineering career, though the family business did bring him back to Hamburg on occasion. It was in 1889 that young Freddie visited an exhibition in Bremen and met two men that were showing their inventions, a certain Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach. At the time, they were working on public tram systems as well as small gas-powered boats, though they had built some cars based on the converted carriage of the first Daimler. Sims was enthralled with both the engine and the idea of the motor car, and Daimler himself liked the young man. Within a few years, the two would be in business together. In 1891, Sims made an agreement with Daimler to manufacture their engines in England under license, as well as use the engines to make other things under the Daimler name. Sims and his family had the means to build a factory and thus began to pump out some engines. However, the Red Flag Act was still in force in England, so Sims decided to first make speedboats as opposed to cars, which did not have the level of restrictions upon them like cars did. Keep in mind that steam-powered boats were known, but not terribly common at the time, and so the idea of a boat powered by a gas engine was just unthinkable. Yet he began to build his boats, and the high revving engines combined with screw propulsion made these boats the fastest things on the Thames. By 1893, Sims formed the Daimler Motor Syndicate and was making motor launches in earnest. Of course, he also wanted to make cars, but the British government wasn't quite ready for that yet. That didn't stop him, nor did it dissuade him from coining new terms for the industry. Frederick was an educated man, speaking English, French, and German fluently, and so began to speak of cars in print in new ways. He was the first to use the term motor car to refer to the horseless carriages being built by Daimler. He also came up with a term to refer to where a car was kept. Borrowing from the French word gérard, meaning to store, he invented the English word garage. He even came up with a new word to describe the fuel that motor cars used, petrol. By 1895, Sims was head of the Daimler Works in Coventry and one of the first to build cars in the UK. This attracted the attention of Harry Lawson, who later that year bought him out. Sims remained on the board of directors for a couple more years, but was not very active in the company. Rather, he focused on the changing of the laws in England to make motor cars viable in the land. And in late 1896, success was at hand with the Red Flag Act rescinded. And yes, Frederick Sims was one of the participants 
in the very first London to Brighton run of that same year, driving, of course, a Daimler. He continued to promote the motor car cause in Her Majesty's lands, founding the Automobile Club in 1897, which would become the Royal Automobile Club ten years later. As its founding member and first president, he directed the club to not only promote the car in England, but also to regulate racing and rally events, which the club still does to this day. A few years later, he established another group, the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, which lobbied for motoring and industrial interests in Parliament. By 1900, Sims was a household name amongst motoring enthusiasts across Great Britain. And he was just getting started. He had begun his own make of car and manufacturing facility in 1899. Being an inventive sort of fellow, he partnered up with a fellow engineer, a Mr. Robert Bosch, to invent, produce, and sell a new type of ignition magneto, the Sims Bosch Ignition System. This magneto was directly connected to the engine's crankshaft, and because of this, timing where and when the spark goes to the cylinder became an easy thing to do. Have you ever heard of Bosch brand of ignition systems? Yes, it's the same guy, and Sims put him into business. Sims even invented and produced inflatable bumpers. Yes, imagine your front bumper having a rubber tube across it that you could inflate just like a tire. It wasn't particularly successful, but he did it. However, there was one other invention of his that was profoundly influential. Frederick had begun his own car company in 1899 and by 1902 was in full production, the Sims Welbeck Motor Car. Sims had the idea of working with another local company, Vickers, to make a car that had two Maxim machine guns mounted on it and plating to protect the occupants in case of small arms fire. The world's first armored car, completed in 1902. Frederick Sims is certainly amongst the greatest innovators in British automotive history. Indeed, for the last couple of decades, the Royal Automobile Club has awarded the Sims Medal to individuals and small companies that make serious advances in automotive technology and is usually awarded in a ceremony along with the Dewar Trophy, which was the brainchild of Sims himself. First awarded in 2003, the Sims Medal is an acknowledgement that even today, there are people in the automotive world that are as brilliant and innovative as one of industry's true British giants, Frederick Sims. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History, and we'll see you next week. Peace.